So we know that cost drivers are activities that cause costs to increase as the activity itself increases. So if we think that labor hours is a good cost driver, then we must think that in our factory, as people work, we must be racking up the overhead. Maybe that's because of utilities are being increased whenever people are working or machines are running. And as a result of machines running, we're racking up a lot of overhead in utility costs. So cost drivers is what we've always used to allocate overhead, right? Okay. And cost drivers are often non-financial, which means they might be the number of hours, like machine hours or labor hours. They're often non-financial. Could they be financial? Yes. But cost drivers are often like labor hours or machine hours. They're not that often are they financial, like labor dollars, but they could be. So typically we've been using the non-financial cost drivers. Now on slide three, types of operational cost drivers. Cost drivers could be volume based. Traditionally, how do we allocate overhead? We take it, we add it all together, and then we divide by a cost driver, which is usually non-financial to get a single rate, and that's how we usually apply overhead, right? Based on that single rate, <clears throat> whatever the cost driver is, we divide the total overhead budgeted amount by the number of budgeted hours, right? That's how we've always done our overhead allocation. Yeah. And that's the way you're supposed to do it for GAP. That's the way GAP wants you to do it. The problem is it's not too precise. It's weak because not all overhead fluctuates with volume like that. Maybe some of your overhead is tied to machine hours, but not all of it. So we get into activity-based costing when a company produces a product in a long series of automated steps where there's a lot of overhead and not as much direct material or direct labor in comparison to how much overhead there is. So let's start from what we know. We know about traditional overhead. Go to slide four. Mm -hmm. A cost driver is usually the cause of a cost rather than a cost itself. So let's assume the cost driver is machine hours and we'll use machine hours to calculate overhead in the factory Traditionally, that's how we've been doing it. So step one is to calculate the overhead rate. And the budgeted overhead costs are $2 million. Where'd that number come from? Well, they have to give you that on the exam. That's what you expect overhead costs to be for the year, $2 million. And what's our cost driver? Machine hours. And how many hours do we expect the machines to run? They'll have to tell you on the exam. 50,000 hours. So the rate per machine hour would be $40 an hour. Now, how do we get that? Just a budgeted rate based on the budgeted overhead. The CPA exam will give you the budgeted overhead costs and the budgeted machine hours. You'll divide, you'll get your rate per hour. That's your cost driver. So for every machine hour, you're going to multiply the machine hours times $40 to get your overhead applied. Isn't that what we've been doing for overhead? Yes. We've been getting a rate like this and then multiplying times an actual amount, number of hours. So that's, that's kind of where we're coming from. I want you to just review where we've been and then we'll go to where we are go next. Let's assume a company makes two products. They make solar panels and they make electric car batteries. All right, so two products are made in the factory and traditional overhead traditional overhead would have us take actual machine hours for let's say the solar panels mm -hmm. they'll tell us on a CPA exam that that's 10,000 hours last year and they'll ask how much overhead is applied to solar panels and you would take that $40 rate 
and multiply by the 10,000 actual machine hours. And using this approach, 400,000 of overhead would be applied to solar panels. And that means the other million six of the two million overhead would be applied to electric car batteries. Right? Because out of two million, if 400,000 went to the solar panels, the other million six would have to go to the electric car batteries. And that's because the other 40,000 machine hours was used to make electric car batteries at the $40 rate. That means you'll apply a million six to electric car batteries, you see? Mm -hmm. Now that's the traditional overhead allocation that we've done since we started doing cost accounting together, right? Yes. Get your rate, multiply times actual. And while this method of overhead allocation is effective, gets the job done, it does allocate the two million of overhead using a single cost driver. It's effective, but it certainly allocated far more overhead to the electric car batteries than it did to the solar panels, right? Yep. Now, it could be that the only cost driver in the factory is volume, number of machine hours. And if that's the case, we would stick with the traditional overhead. But what if there's other overhead in the factory that has nothing to do with machine hours? We're stuck if we use traditional overhead because we're only going to use machine hours as the cost driver. And maybe not all the overhead in the factory, maybe not all 2 million of overhead was based on the volume of machine hours. But we only took that one overhead rate to assign all 2 million of overhead cost. So this is what we did on slide six. We took the total machine hours for each solar panels and electric car batteries and multiplied it by the $40 rate. And that's how we split up the 2 million. That's traditional overhead allocation. So on slide seven, of the two million in overhead cost, traditional overhead allocates a million six to the batteries and only 400,000 to the solar panels. And that's because traditional overhead treats all two million of overhead as a single cost pool. Traditional overhead takes all $2 million and lumps it together and says, you're overhead. That's the weakness of traditional overhead. Calling all overhead a single cost and not breaking it up separately. What you're left with is 80% of the machine hours was consumed to make car batteries and only 20% of the machine hours were used to make panels, so it's going to be obvious that the machine hours, since more were used to make car batteries, car batteries are going to have a lot more of the overhead allocated to it. And we said if that's the only overhead in the factory is what's generated by the machinery, then I guess it's okay to use traditional overhead, and it's probably accurate. But what makes up the two million of overhead cost? It's probably not just one cost. It's probably more than one cost. And that's what we're going to get to now with activity-based costing. Look at eight. A closer look at the overhead in the factory shows that overhead cost is actually incurred from two activities, not just one. There's material handling in the factory generating overhead cost. And there's utilities. Now, while the utilities are related to machine hours, certainly as the machines run, the utility cost increases. There's your cost driver. The fact that you have machine hours allocating overhead because you have utility costs that's dependent on machine hours. 
So while the utilities are related to machine hours, there's another overhead cost in this factory called material handling. And that's raw materials being moved around the factory from department to department. And material handling is not related to machine hours. What's material handling related to? It says the pounds of materials being handled by that department. That's generating overhead. So we, we found another cost in the factory besides utilities. We said the utilities might be generated by machine hours, but here's a second overhead cost that we're thinking is not generated by machine hours but rather by the pounds of materials that come in and out of that department. So that leaves us with a possibility on slide nine. We could allocate the overhead the same old way, traditional, up top, the first three lines on this box, this table. We could get the overhead allocated to the solar panels and the electric car batteries on a 20%, 80% basis like we've been doing, where a million six of the two million gets over, gets allocated to the electric car batteries and 400,000 gets allocated to the solar panels, we could do that. In fact, that's the way GAP requires you to do it. But internally, for our own records, our own internal reporting, we may want to do it a little bit differently to really try to drill down and see how much overhead's really being consumed by each product, the solar panels and the electric car batteries. So if we get a little closer, let's use ABC, the bottom of slide nine there, the second part of the box. You can see that instead of doing it with one cost pool, instead of just taking $2 million as one figure, we're all of a sudden going to look at the what's adding up to our $2 million of overhead. And a close look sees that plant utilities happen to be 800,000 of the $2 million. And certainly that's driven by the machine hours. And so we can let the 800,000, that is plant utility cost, we can let that be allocated based on machine hours. And since there were 10,000 machine hours dedicated to solar panels and 40,000 dedicated to car batteries, let that $800,000 be split up 80-20. 80 to the car battery, 20 to the solar panels. But then let's break out the other million two of the two million. You see what we're doing now? Mm -hmm. taking that million two of material handling and saying that's being driven not by machine hours but by the pounds of materials. So how many materials, how many pounds of materials did it take to make solar panels? It took 100,000 pounds. How many pounds of materials did it take to make car batteries? It took 60,000 pounds. So now, if you look at it, you'll see that even though the car batteries took a lot more machine hours, it looks like the solar panels took a lot more material handling. So what you're going to find is when we get all done with the, doing the ABC for these two different products, we're going to wind up with overhead getting allocated to both that are a lot closer to 2 million. When we add the t when we combine the two, we're going to see instead of 400,000 and a million six, it's going to be more like take a look at slide 10. 910,000 and a million 90. Look how much closer we come to each other rather than saying a million six gets allocated to the car batteries and only 400,000 to the solar panels.
because we're using more than one cost driver when we allocate the overhead to each activity, material handling and plant utilities separately. We break the cost out. We take that $2 million and instead of looking at it as one cost pool, notice we suddenly have two cost pools on slide 10. We have a cost pool for plant utilities and we have a separate cost pool for material handling. Now you see how we took that 800,000 in plant utility cost out of the 2 million and we let that be allocated by machine hours. 10,000 over 50,000 to the solar panels that gives us 20% of the 800 or 160,000 of the 800 gets allocated to solar panels the remaining 640 to the car batteries instead of all 2 million getting allocated that way that's the beauty of this instead of all 2 million getting allocated 80 percent 20 percent only 800,000 has to be allocated that way because it's only costing us 800,000 in plant utilities not 2 million so we don't have to treat overhead as one cost pool, at least not for internal reporting. For GAP we do, but for internal reporting we could do it this way and be more precise with how much overhead we allocate to each product. So material handling, we go to the million two now and we see that solar panels took 100,000 pounds of materials and car batteries only took 60,000 pounds. So quite a bit more overhead from the material handling department will be allocated to the solar panels because of that many more pounds of materials that they had to handle. 100,000 over the total of 160, 62 and a half percent times the cost of a million two that's where we get the 750,000 from. Then the other 60,000 of 160 that gets allocated to the batteries, that's 37.5% of the million two, and that's 450,000. And then we add up what was allocated above from the utilities, and we know how much total overhead to allocate to each. And notice it's very close, very precise, and they're almost the same amount of overhead getting allocated to each product. Very different than when we used a single cost driver. And the reason for this is that not all overhead is volume based. Not all overhead varies by machine hour. While the plant utilities, they do vary by machine hour, but the material handling does not. All right, any questions so far? What do you mean by multiple cost pools? I know I understand the drivers, are the multiple cost pools like different activities? Yes, yes, each activity gets its own cost pool. So we see okay. that on slide 10, there's two activities. There's a plant utilities activity. Well, what was the cost of utilities this year? 800,000. That's the cost pool, okay. That's just the cost of utilities. So we're not going to claim that all two million of overhead is based on machine hours if only 800,000 was. Okay. This allows us to treat each department as its own activity center with its own cost. Okay. Both plant utilities and material handling are overhead but they're done, let's say, in different departments, so each department's gonna have its own cost pool and be able to allocate overhead with its own cost driver. What's the cost driver in the material handling department? The pounds of materials. What's the cost pool in that department? A million two. So notice we're allocating a million two of cost in the material handling department and we're allocating 800,000 of cost in the plant utilities department. Each department, each activity center 
gets its own cost pool and its own cost driver. So if you had to write about activity-based costing in a writing assignment, it would make for a great writing assignment. What's the advantages of activity-based costing versus traditional overhead? And you could say that in traditional overhead, you're limited to one cost pool, all two million, in one department and one cost driver. Volume, something that varies with production, like machine hours. And you're limited to that, and the weakness of that is that not all overhead varies that way. For example, material handling has nothing to do with that. So the strength of activity-based costing is you can have multiple activity centers, each with its own cost driver, to allocate the cost of that department, to allocate the overhead cost of that department to a more precise amount of overhead versus the traditional overhead. And this is very good for internal reporting. Factories that have a lot of overhead, they will, that's where this started. This is not that old. This is a pretty recent concept, not too old now. Activity-based costing. As robots started to replace people in the factories, activity-based costing started to become more popular. On 11, from the facts in the prior example, how much more overhead is allocated to solar panels using ABC costing compared to traditional overhead? $240,000. Well, how much more overhead is allocated to solar panels using ABC? Well, how much overhead was allocated to solar panels using ABC? Oh, for solar panels, it was the, the 160 plus. 750, which is that total of 910. 910. So 910 okay. gets allocated to solar panels using ABC. How much overhead got allocated to solar panels using traditional? The 400. So 400. Yeah. So the answer is 510. So and this is the kind of question that they're going to ask you. See, I walked you through every little bit of the steps that you would have to do to come up with that answer of 510. But that's the question on today's 2017 CPA exam. They want you to analyze. Make a decision at a higher level. Say, how much more overhead to this product if you use this method rather than that one? Thirteen. Using the same facts, what percentage of total overhead is allocated to the car batteries under activity-based costing? I'm seeing that what percentage of total overhead is allocated to car batteries under ABC? Mm -hmm. So you have 80, 37.5. 
Is it, I don't know, is it 1.175? I don't know if that's the right answer. What's the question? Um, I don't know. I don't know this one. Harvey, All right, I'm, so under I don't ABC, know this. how much total overhead gets allocated to car batteries? Give me the total. Well, wouldn't it be, okay, so it's asking for car batteries, total overhead. You, oh, you, oh, you take the 200 over, okay, I didn't think about this, never mind, one, zero, one, nine, oh, divided by the 2 million, I didn't think about this, it'd be 54.5% be the yes, answer? that's right. No, I just, I just didn't think about this. Though. Yeah, after one like we just did, that one was too easy, or like, it can't be that easy. Just take the total mm -hmm. overhead allocated to car batteries divided by 2 million. All right, any questions so far?